Please welcome to the stage, Elena Klitscherova.
So without further ado, here is Lauren Milner.
upon a dream, strange as it may seem, stories had a happy ending, reaching for the stars above you, hand in hand we touch the sky. So now, we're going to turn the next segment of the show over to Michael Kelly Cabot. I had another song listed on the program, but I'm going to do a different song now, because it's just what I do. <laughs> I just thought this one would be more appropriate for a sacred setting here. A little song that I wrote here. years ago. I always loved tales of the sea, ships in full sail, called out to me to sail round the horn or over the pole. These are the dreams I'll never behold. Here in my life, landlocked and dry, I've traveled seas as big as the sky, storms just as rough. Waves just as tall, and you were there with me through them all. You are my rock, you are my island. When things get dark, I head for you. You are the light off in the distance, guiding me home to where I belong. Island of Christ. Times lost on the sea of despair, tumbled and tossed, I sent out a prayer, covered my head in the darkness of night. I woke in the dawn in your harbor of light. I felt the wind on the sea of love, it filled up my sails and lifted me up out of this world's tangled embrace. I reached out my hand and I touched your face. You are my rock, you are my island. When things get dark, I head for you. You are the light off in the distance, guiding me home to where I belong. There where there's light 
Um, not completely, but topic-wise. For many years, I uh, played in uh, legions throughout Ontario. It's a real wonderful world, but what I discovered about legions is they're beautiful places, and one of the beauties of them to me is that uh, people dance there, and they dance in that way that most people with the sort of lighter toned hair out here would be able to relate to. Um, and it's, uh, it's that lovely, lovely dance that uh, I never learned when I was a kid, but where a couple dances moves around the floor and their feet are moving in, in concert with each other. And it's just so beautiful. And they're, you know, they're truck drivers and, you know, uh, whatever they are, they're, they're, they're not people who are trained dancers, but they dance so beautifully. So one time I was at a legion and I, uh, I had a thought about, about that and I wrote this little song called Two Step Life. around the floor In a two-step they had danced I'm sure a thousand times before Her yellow cotton dress floated like a carousel Like skaters on a frozen pond They moved around so well With every song the band played They were out there going round Their silver hair was gleaming As the mirror ball shone You're seeing here today and are yet to see. These, these people are all local and um, when a fundraising campaign started back last sem September I guess at uh, Notre Dame Chapel or St. Jerome's, uh, I just scribbled my name down as a volunteer having no idea that it would turn into something like this. But fortunately uh, it seems to be working out okay so. <laughs> especially since we have a full house, and I'm just thrilled by that. This next act, our group of talent, has amazed me since I first met them. Uh, Andre Tikhanov is probably one of the finest jazz musicians this country has to offer. And with his trio, who he'll be introducing, I know you will be impressed. 
So let's hear it for the Andre Tikhonov Trio. Hello everybody, my name is Andre. Uh, before we're going to start a couple of next tunes, I'd like to introduce first of all my band, who are going to play with me tonight. Uh, so, Andy McPherson, he's a drummer. to see so many people here. It's uh, um, just incredible to see that many. And I'm pleased to see so many friends here as well. Uh, thank you for coming for this concert, because really, uh, this concert is quite unique, uh, for me especially, and uh, I'll try to explain you why. First of all, this is the first time I'm uh, at the concert where you can hear different styles of music and everything in one concert, plus loads of uh, music with uh, uh, original stuff uh, is just incredible and uh, if you would go for each concert like this you're going to be lots of money you know <laughs> here's just like boom and you hear it all so this is number one why it's unique and why I'm, I'm so happy to be part of this concert uh, anyway so we're going to play a couple tunes uh, and the first tune is one of samba um, written by Antonio Carlos Jabim and uh, if you like Latin music you would probably know this name quite well uh, this guy wrote songs or tunes like uh, Girl from Ipanema, Wave, and many, many, many other ones. So one of them is one of Samba. That's what we're going to start with.
So that was a nice start of the Latin music, and the next one I'd like to introduce to you one of my own compositions. I wrote uh, probably a year ago and put it on my last CD, which is called Precious Time, and a tune called actually Precious Time as well.
Now, the first time I met Andre was roughly 13 years ago, and all he could say in English was hello. <laughs> and I'm serious. It's amazing how he's picked up the language in such a short period of time. And he couldn't play the piano then either. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm doing really well. Now, in case you weren't aware of it, Elena, who opened the show, is Andre's wife. So that is a house full of music. And when their little boy, Max, first was able to sit on a stool near a piano, he would close his fists like this and play our pictures. And about the one year old. So it's going to continue. I'm calling up a young lady now who I've literally known all her life.
just like every child. We need to find a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us this so we'll be Chess. Um, the story is about um, a girl named Florence, and she falls in love with this Russian man, and everything's going well until she meets this Russian man's wife, Svetlana. <laughs> um, so this is a duet that they sing. It's near the end of the musical, and it's both of them saying, "Well, I guess, I guess I know him so well, and I'm not entirely surprised that this has happened." But it's the two of them singing. Um, about just how sad they are. So please enjoy. <laughs> Understand the man. Now 
God. 54 years ago, I didn't know Lauren, but that's not what I'm going to do. <laughs> but I did know and met a fellow by the name of Peter McCutcheon. In fact, in that 1960, we formed a band which some of you may have heard of. It was called the Rondells. And uh, Peter's here today uh, because uh, he wrote half the music in the show that we were seeing. The CD of Warren's, Peter wrote the whole CD except for one piece, which he's going to tell you about right now. Please welcome Peter McCutcheon. I'd just like to say a few words before I uh, sit down at the keyboard. Um, I am just blown away by the scope and quality of the talent that is present in this region. I come from the West where we've got Michael Buble and uh, <laughs> David Foster and uh, Brian Adams and Sarah McLaughlin. It goes on and on and on, but I can't believe the quality of the music that is coming out of Waterloo. And it's a tribute to, I'm honored to be here, particularly in the presence of such incredible musicians. Douglas Haas, you haven't even seen on stage yet, and you're going to be blown out of your seats when he sits down. But um, I, I attribute it to, first of all, the quality of the, uh, the tuition that is going on here. The schools like uh, Olena's uh, Accent Piano Studio, um, Andre's uh, KW School of Music, and of course the Faculty of Music at uh, Laurier. Um, where you have a very, very high caliber of uh, education, musical education, which is drawing talent, not just from the local region, but from all over Canada. And uh, I have a hunch that uh, Kitchener-Waterloo is the next stable of musical talent that Canada will be exporting on the world scene. So I really congratulate you and on your fortunes to be in, uh, in Kitchener-Waterloo. I also want to Thank Lauren, who is my sweetheart. <laughs> I have fallen in love with this lady. She has, uh, she was introduced to me about a year ago by Dennis, as he mentioned, and she has done me the great honor of uh, producing this uh, 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 debut album, which is all my work, but she, uh, Lauren makes me look better than I ever imagined I could sound <laughs> just playing on the piano. And I love her voice, and it's, it's maturing every time I hear her sing. Uh, this next song is, um, my exercise, normally when I write a piece of music, I usually write the music and then I come up with some lyrics to go along with it because the music kind of inspires a, a, a notion or a theme or a message. And I thought it'd be interesting to try the opposite. So I chose uh, the poem by William Butler Yeats, which many of you are probably familiar with. It's one of Ireland's most beloved uh, poet, poems, The Lake Isle of Inish Free, and decided what would it sound like if I set it to music. So this is my experiment with working the opposite way around. Come 
Well, we, we have a 10 minute intermission coming up, but just prior to that, one little note about the song you've just heard. About the same time that uh, Peter and I had our kind of reunion, the Lassard House in Kitchener announced that they were building a satellite or another uh, home. And it's called Innis Free House. And we tied this song together with Innis Free House and are donating all of the rights to that song well, that Peter has composed to Innis Free House. instrument. It's powered by a huge blower that resides up behind those pipes, and that blower puts wind into reservoirs. You see all the space under the pipes over there? Those are wind reservoirs. And each one of those pipes is on a valve, and when I push it out here, the valve opens, and the wind goes through the pipe, and voila, we have a sound. There you are. That's <laughs> The various sounds, you know, the organ has flutes. Does, does this sound like a flute to anyone? Or something like this? Right, the organ has string sounds. Aha, our February weather, look. And then the sound that is unique to the organ is called the diapason sound. It's this type of thing. All right. Besides the, uh, the four keyboards that you see here, we have a pedal board. And I don't know how well you can see it, but the pedal board is just another keyboard that you play with your feet. Then, I think I should show you the lowest note. This is this. And the highest note, let me find it. There it is. We go to the very top. Can you hear that? <laughs> can you hear it? Well, can you imagine? I used to say in my youth and arrogance, when I can't hear that note anymore, I have to retire. <laughs> and one day I was doing an organ demo for a high school class, and I said, here's the highest note. And I heard nothing. And I was in a real dilemma. Uh, I'm too young to retire. <laughs> I can't afford to retire. And was making all these excuses until about a week later, the organ maintenance guys came in and said, hey Doug, did you know your top note was out? <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> All right, demo is over. We're going to put everything together and listen to one of the great, one of the most famous pieces for the organ, the Bach Tocat. And this one is in D minor.
this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to play a duet with such a talented person. The contemporary Canadian composer Denise Bedard has written a suite for piano and organ. You never get to hear it for obvious reasons. And the whole suite is about half an hour of magic. And perhaps someday we'll do the whole thing, Elena. But for today, you'll have to be happy with the finale.
from the very popular stage show, Wicked, here's Lord Miller again, performing a fine gravity.
was Annie Moore of Ireland, who was only 15 years. Isle of hope, Isle of tears, Isle of freedom, Isle of fears, but it's not the Isle you left. I'll pay, I'll you'll never see again, for the Isle of Home is always on your mind. In a little bag she carried all her past and history, and dreams for the future in the land of liberty. Courage is your password when your old world disappears. There's no future in your past when you are only 15 years. Oh, Isle of Hope, Isle of Tears, Isle of Freedom, Isle of Fears. But it's not the Isle you left. For the Isle of Home is always on your mind. When they closed down Ellis Island in 1943, 17 million people had come there for a century. And in springtime, when I came here, stood upon its pier. I wondered how it must have been when you were 15 years. Oh, I'll hold, I'll have tears, I'll have freedom, I'll have fears, but it's not the I'll you on your three years old, in the 50s, and uh, <clears throat> my, uh, my mother, we, we crossed, I'm from a family of uh, 13 children, I have six brothers and six sisters, and uh, I had six brothers and six sisters, and uh, uh, I always say to people, we don't talk to each other, <clears throat> because we yell at each other. <laughs> um, but uh, my mom came across the ocean on a ship by herself, my father had come the year before, and uh, to look for work in Canada, and uh, my mom uh, came across with nine children on the ship. And we always figured my dad was sitting in a pub somewhere while my mom was crossing the Atlantic. <laughs> so there's a song called Child of the For reasons I may never know, my father chose to fly away to North America to see what he sent my mom a letter saying, pack the kids and come. So we left our house in Arbor Town and sailed to our new home. We sailed aboard Escania, a ship from Liverpool. Heart and 
when I sing those songs my father sang when I was young. I get a feeling in my heart that wells up sweet and strong. And though I know I'll never live in dear old Ireland, oh, there's history running through my veins, saying you're a Please welcome the lovely and talented Sydney Trotter. The story tells about how it felt for a 17-year-old to be shipped across the world and leave the love of his life behind in Ireland. It's called First Love. I see your smile, I hear your voice, it's been a not by choice I still remember in fields of green when last I saw you at seventeen all the years we've been apart through all the tears and every I can't imagine what might have been across the ocean. Lies between 
introduce the tune you already know what's the name of it <laughs> so I went on uh, Wikipedia on the internet and tried to find out what's really uh, about this I could write the book a tune uh, what it's all about and what that's what I found first of all it's written by Rogers and Hart if you know uh, who are those guys that's actually quite famous collaboration of two musicians who were writing lots of good music and some of that I might tell you right now, just bear with me one second. Uh, My Funny Valentine, if you know that tune. Well, good, I'm not playing it tonight. <laughs> How about Blue Moon? Yeah. Yeah, you see, still I'm not playing it. <laughs> yeah, My Romance, My Heart, not will go on, stood still, here we are. So there's a bunch of tunes, uh, they wrote uh, they wrote a bunch of musicals and what's not, but today we're going to play just one of them, and, it, and the name for it, I could write a book. <laughs> Thank you. 
again, one of the interesting things about playing music, and especially jazz music, and uh, as long as you're playing it more and more and more, but, you know, after a while you start writing your own stuff. Uh, you've heard so much music and you, you would like to show to people that you know it and you appreciate it, and you do lots of uh, different things, uh, playing together with different people. But anyway, uh, one of the famous uh, musicians, piano players, who probably know all, it was Oscar Peterson. Uh, he impressed me really with uh, something everybody was, uh, is trying to do, but it's very hard to do. His technique was incredible. He was playing very fast. He could play probably a million notes in a couple of minutes, <laughs> just very easily. Um, I was trying to do it, didn't work out. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I I'm still trying, so maybe, maybe in, the, in, in a couple of years I would be able to do something. Uh, the next tune we'd like to play, um, it's one of my tunes and I just named it like this, Peterson Blues. <laughs>
thank you again, and I'd like to introduce one more time my musicians I was playing with. It's uh, Carl Stevenson on the bass. And Andy, and Andy McPherson on the drums. Thank you, Andre, who will be appearing at the Jazz Room again fairly soon, I believe. Sure. One day. <laughs> He's like this, you know. I asked him if he'd perform in this show, and he said, sure. Yeah.